you know, how do you debug some of these old boards, especially when you have some very questionable repair work done by people that maybe don't know how to do uh, a circuit board level repair. You know, when you buy these used pinball machines, you're often finding very hacky repairs where um, people have damaged the circuit board by not removing the solder correctly before prying a chip out, they've lifted traces, they've cracked traces, they've shorted traces, and it can be very time consuming. So, um, from a request from one of our viewers, I thought I would explain some different techniques for finding these things and how I solved the problem on this particular machine that he was watching. Now, um, on this particular board, someone had pulled some parts off and pulled some traces up and they tried to repair it themselves with um, by sanding the top of the circuit board probably with some light sandpaper and sanded through the solder mask which ended up breaking a lot of connections and the board was completely dead. What I found was a lot of bus contention or what's called bus contention and that's where you have multiple chips that are driving on the same shared wire and if you hook the, the the wire that has bus contention up to an oscilloscope, you'll see a pattern like this. So this is, you'll see normal switching, little pulses going up and down. This particular board was uh, 5 volt logic, so it was going up near 5 volts and down near zero and pulsing. You started to see things like this, which were stair steps, where you had two um, devices driving onto the bus with differing logic levels, one driving up, one driving down, and they were fighting each other, bus contention. So you see partial steps. So when I saw that on the oscilloscope, I immediately knew there were some shorts. Or um, I also saw a few places on the, on the, the scope where it looked like this. We were getting ramps going up. And this indicated that some of these chips that had an output enable control, which turned on the drivers onto this bus, there was a, a disconnect there. So this driver was floating on and off kind of randomly. So those are two things to look for. And another thing to do when you're working with the boards and you suspect that there's intermittent shorts or open connections is when you have the scope on it, go ahead and flex the board a little bit because sometimes there will be uh, broken connections to particular chips that you'll be able to spot. And you can tap on the chip sometimes to identify areas. So there's some techniques for um, finding bus contention and repairing very badly damaged boards. About five more minutes. Why don't I show a pinball board and kind of show the structures on it real quick. So this is called a cheap squeak board used in arcade and pinball machines. The way this is configured is you have a processor here and then there's some RAM and some ROM usually near it. And these ROM chips are hooked in parallel very much like this structure of multiple wires all hooked together and they're only supposed to talk on that bus at one time. So when you're having trouble with these boards that don't come up at all, I always go straight for the address and data bus to these memory chips and just see what they look like. See if they're toggling at all. Um, because when a processor is running a program, these lines will be toggling a lot because it'll be going through various loops and you'll be able to see that. Another see here another technique I've used quite a bit in the past not as much now that I have nice oscilloscopes is when I was a kid I used to use piezo earpieces with piezo earpieces they're high impedance and high impedance means pretty much if you were to put this on a data line the data line wouldn't really notice that it's connected across between the ground and the data line so and Correct. So our right, Ian said, um, asked if you take one of the leads, there's two leads going to this, you hook it to the ground, and then the other lead you use to probe 
the different parts of the chip and you listen to that and if you'll hear chirps and sounds that are very unique to what's going on and as you start to learn about these different systems you can almost get this feel for what it should sound like when it's functioning correctly you know sometimes if it's stuck in an endless loop um, you may have a kind of a mellow deep sound because it's not um, traveling across some of these lines or toggling these lines as often but if it's very active you might hear a high frequency so um, unconventional but it works sometimes <laughs>